it seems as though this morning is destined to be buffalo filled, isn't it, Dave? Mm. I was aiming for the journey of giraffe behind this group of buffalo bulls. There they are in the background. But it appears as though we're not going to get up close to them just yet because we have a rather obstinate obstacle. Oh, that's quite a nice sentence. An obstinate obstacle in our path in the form of a massive buffalo bull. And we've spoken about the fact already that the buffalo here look at you slightly differently and we've been almost charged a few times in the vehicles. Not, I don't think it's ever serious and I don't think they'd actually follow through but it's not really a risk that you want to take with the 900 kilogram battering ram. It's not really something that you want to experience. There we go. Thanks boy. And when in doubt I think it's best to let them move along in their own time. What you would have noticed, I hope, or at least our regular viewers would have noticed because they've been learning about the different birds, is just how much more common the yellow-billed oxpecker are in this area. Now, one of the, the big reasons why, if I was to walk out here, I would probably stick to places with the sort of around the rivers with the big trees even though it might be slightly more likely that I'd encounter something like a buffalo or a hippo. The fact is, on an open plain like this, if you meet a buffalo bull lying in the grass, you're not going to see him until it's too late, and you don't have anywhere to go. And Douglas, there's no running away from a buffalo bull. At full charge, you're looking at somewhere between around about 12 to 15 meters per second that they can move. They can't keep that speed up for too long, but just think about that, 12 to 15 meters per second. What's that? That's just under 45 feet per second that they can cover. Now imagine that the momentum that that would generate if it's charging at you at full speed. Oh, there we go. It was a half-hearted canter. There's no human being that can outrun a buffalo. So there's no point in running away from them out here. All you're going to do is spur them on to greater feelings of irritation with you but you don't really have anywhere to go there's no termite mounds there's some very small bushes that you could possibly hide behind ah an interesting question from Douglas Douglas would like to know if buffalo herds are matriarchal or patriarchal it's difficult to classify them as either. So a buffalo bull will always be more dominant than the females, and that's simply because they're larger. But apparently there's some research that seems to suggest that the movement of the buffalo herd is almost democratically decided by the females, which sounds really odd, but I promise you this is the, art, this is the research article that I read. Let me pop my monitor down. So apparently when a buffalo herd is getting up to move, the females will lie down facing a direction and when the majority of them are facing a direction they go in that direction so it's kind of in a way it's led by the females into sort of a group decision but it's really difficult to classify it as either to be completely honest it's not like an elephant herd where you basically the males are just tagging along for the ride if they are around and the females stick together and led by the oldest female um, and it's not really you can't really compare it to a pride of lions either. In a buffalo herd like this, this isn't really so much a breeding herd as it's definitely not a breeding herd, it's a bachelor herd of buffalo. So I guess in this case you could say it's pretty patriarchal in that they're all boys. And they'll practice their fighting and their dominance every now and again, but really they get on pretty well and there's no noticeable hierarchy. You'll probably find with the buffalo breeding herds that the females the more experienced females will take the lead. Right, well since our buffalo have moved quite far away, I'm thinking of getting a little bit closer to those giraffe. I still haven't found the Angama Pride. Their tracks disappeared somewhere in this direction, so you never know. We might get lucky. So while we go off in search of big creatures, it seems as though Byron has found something very sweet and very fluffy. <laughs> 